All right, in this video, I'm going to be tying up the Shad Comet. Uh, this is a, a fly that I've had in my fly box really since the first year I started targeting Shad on the fly. Um, I just didn't know what it was called. Uh, it, it's really just a fly that's similar to a salmon and steelhead fly called the Comet. Um, resembles that it. it's just scaled down to target Shad. Um, it's been a, a standard alternate in my fly box uh, since the beginning, and I've had a lot of success with it. Um, I encourage you to always have alternates, so even if you have some standard patterns that you use on a regular basis and you know are effective, um, it's always good to have uh, some alternates in the box as well in case they, the fish start to get finicky. Um, I, I used to not like tying hackle type flies as much as I do now, so that's probably why it ended up in the alternate slot um, compared to things like the Kiptail Clouser and, and Gotchas and Crazy Charlies. Um, but I, I've started to enjoy the, the process of tying um, hackled flies a, a lot more. So uh, this is a great fly to dead drift and it, it really has a lot of innate action in it. It doesn't require a lot of a lot from you to, to bring to life. So um, it, it's, it's definitely a good fly when the fish seem to be pickier than usual in shallow water on bright days, um, you know, etc. So. Um, an interesting note about this fly is one of the um, bycatches that I, I've had with this fly is gar in, in fairly large numbers. I probably have caught more gar on this fly than any other combined. So I don't know what gar think this fly is, but they seem interested in it. And if you're going to have bycatch from targeting shad, um, that's a, that's some fun bycatch. So um, in the vise, I have a mustad. 3366A in a size 6 and that's a large ring hook. I like these hooks a lot. <clears throat> I will be tying this fly with 6 aught uni thread and a fire orange. So I'm going to start my thread base and this will be an eye's length behind the eye. If you're tying on a standard size, um, standard eye size hook you might want to start two eye lengths down but this is a, a large eye um, so I'm starting just one. I'm going to take my thread down to the bar. Snip away the excess and go ahead and bring it back up to the tie end point. Uh, for the tail I'm going to be using some white kip tail. I'm going to pull out the fluff and then hold by the tips, pull out any of the shorter hairs. I like the tail to be oh, maybe just a little bit longer than the, the gap of the hook. Relatively short tail. Go ahead and bring the tail, uh, bring the thread down to the butt of the fly. And then we can snip away our excess. Alright, for the body, we're going to be using some orange flashaboo. You just need two or three strands of that. And I'm just going to fold that around my thread in half. and capture that at the butt of the fly and then advance my thread forward. And I'm just going to stop shy of the tie-in point and just go ahead and wrap my body. So the use of flash is somewhat subtle on this fly. Just enough. And there's probably enough there to take it back down and back up. And capture with your thread.
protect that body, I'm just going to touch it with a little Sally Hansen's. And we'll let that dry. Alright, our Sally Hansen's is dry. Uh, next we're going to build up a small uh, bump using some uh, orange ice dub dubbing. So I'm just going to take some of that and dub it on to my thread. We just need a small bump here. This will help prop our hackle. Doesn't need to be huge. That looks pretty good. And then I'm just going to advance my thread forward and build up a small base of thread to help <clears throat> help us tie in the hackle. All right, for the hackle, I would typically use a uh, a feather from a hen neck nowadays, a nice soft hackle uh, to do this. But originally, I tied it with um, just strung rooster saddle. And that's what I'm going to do here today. Um, you can definitely find usable feathers in uh, strung saddles. You're really just looking for something kind of wide and webby. Um, so this is a really inexpensive way to, to tie this fly. <clears throat> so I'm looking for a section that's, that's relatively webby and wide, kind of down towards the base of this um, feather. I don't need the uh, length to be terribly long. I, I really only want the length to come back to the bend of the hook. So I'm just going to measure. Just measure to find the right length. That looks pretty good. So now I'll just go ahead and prepare my hackle by stripping away all the fuzz. Okay, I have prepared my feather and also swapped the battery in my camera because I heard it turn off. Um, so I prepared my feather here and um, have <clears throat> kind of a long section of stem exposed here that'll help me tie, uh, tie in a little more easily <clears throat> and help capture that, um, that feather. So I'm just going to give my bobbin uh, a few spins counterclockwise. It just helps me more easily capture that stem. And I'm going to take several, maybe three, four good firm wraps there, advance my thread, and then fold that barb up and capture on the way back. That'll just make sure that uh, feather is locked on the shank of the hook. <clears throat> Next, what I want to do is just stroke those barbs backwards towards the back of the fly. Definitely easier if you wet your fingers. And then I'm just going to take a single turn with this feather. I like these sparse. If you like them a little thicker you can take more than one but I like them sparse and then I'm just going to capture with my thread and then we can just go ahead and snip away the excess feather That looks pretty good. Strip the feather back just slightly and make a few wraps in front. And that just helps kind of splay it open. Get a nice umbrella shape. And if you have a straggler or two, you can either pull them off or uh, cut them. That looks pretty good. For the eyes, I'm going to be using some orange bee chain. You can use whatever, whatever color bead chain you prefer. No. 
and you just want to be ca uh, careful not to capture those hackle fibers. Flip it over, make some shoulders. And then I'm just going to go ahead and whip finish behind the eye. And we just want to snip away the excess thread. And there you have it. That is the Shad Comet.